I am a publisher, writer, editor, daughter, sister, auntie, dog mom, and many other things, including currently a cancer patient. But I am not a doctor or medical professional of any sort. What you are about to watch is an episode of my journey through cancer. I'm sharing my adventure with you in hopes that you'll find something here that's comforting and maybe even inspiring. This video is not intended to provide any sort of diagnosis or treatment plan. Please, please go talk with your doctor for professional medical advice. So a mnemonic device is a memory technique uh, that helps you to retain and more easily retrieve certain information. Uh, for example, most of us know the sentence, every good boy does fine. But did you know that it is a mnemonic device for music students to help them remember the order of notes in the treble clef, e.g. BDF? Um, I use mnemonic devices all the time. Um, my go-to for this type of device is acronyms. Um, how to remember a grocery list um, when you have to get eggs, dog food, lemons, maple syrup, and tea. Well, you rearrange the first letters of the words to form a new word. Um, in this case, left, lemons, eggs, food, tea, syrup. Sometimes you end up with very strange words, but the technique always works. For the last several weeks, I have been having a bit of a meltdown around a lump I found in my pelvic region when I was giving myself a lymphatic drainage massage. In the last two weeks, I have undergone three different CT scans or attempts at CT scans to try to find out what the lump might be, what we know so far. The lump is in my sigmoid, sigmoid colon, a body part whose name I can remember only by thinking of Sigmund Freud. Sigmund, sigmoid, and also apt because like what is probably going on with my sigmoid colon, Sigmund Freud was full of shit. Um, the sigmoid colon sits in the lower third of one's large intestine. Um, it's, um, it sits low in the abdominal cavity near the uterus in women and the bladder in men. Um, and its primary purpose is to be a holding tank for poop. There are any number of problems one can experience with the sigmoid colon, ulcerative colitis, um, Crohn's disease, diverticulitis, cancer. For me, the problem could very well be not cancer, but rather linked to the fact that I've just undergone a course of pelvic radiation and pelvic radiation really fucks with bowel function. And my bowels are still healing. And my sigmoid colon isn't emptying efficiently. At least that's what my radi radiation oncologist and the radiologist who has been reading the CT scans um, are lately thinking, but they also don't want to um, poo-poo what may be going on. So I'm seeing uh, the colorectal surgeon who is monitoring my overall bowel health through recovery in the first week of March um, because my oncologist thinks that a sigmoid oscopy, sigmoid oscopy is a reasonable next step. And this is because there is a small chance that what is going on is that I have another cancer in that part of my bowel. And it is this small chance that has been the reason why I've been tucked in bed and asleep a lot of the time lately. Um, falling asleep on the regular for 12 or more hours a day um, hasn't been a problem at all. And the reason for this is likely the enormous stress of wondering whether I've got another round of cancer to battle. Um, I feel continually fatigued, and when I tuck in under the covers, um, the sense of relief in giving myself permission to fall asleep is overwhelmingly blissful. Um, I admit that I have frequently rationalized uh, while in this state of bliss that what I am doing by falling asleep yet again is simply storing up energy I might need in case I need to do another battle against cancer. But cancer is a marathon, not a sprint. 
Now, you know what? I, I'm not sure that it's even so much a marathon as a fucking never ending roller coaster ride. Um, I am nearly five months out from treatment, um, but I'm still healing and I have to accept that. Cancer is also the worst possible reason to go borrowing trouble. If the small chance that this is more cancer turns out to be the case, I'll face it head on when I find out more. And for sure. Meantime, I am making a conscious fighting effort to stay awake for at least a few more hours a day than I have been. If you want to follow a deeper dive into what I'm calling the not safe for work aspects of cancer treatment and recovery, you can follow me on Patreon. The link is below. Thank you for watching. I will see you again in a couple of weeks and hopefully that will be with really good news. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Also, don't forget to call your senators and your congresspeople to demand universal health care. And most importantly, don't forget to vote.